My name is Phil Lewis, and for 25 years I was the interfaith advisor to the Bishop of Bradford and taught in the Peace Studies Department, lecturing on religions, conflict, and peacemaking. And my particular passion is how complex cities, complex religiously, ethnically, how they hold together and what the role of religion is in that holding together and to enable human flourishing as well. Because I work in the field of Christian-Muslim relations, I think anyone who works in that field is enormously impressed by a new young generation of British Muslim women. They are undoubtedly the agents of change. The agents of change is a bit of peace studies jargon, but it's very clear from my own experience of 25 years working in Bradford that it's young British Muslim women who want to see change happen. And there's some very creative initiatives across the country where British Muslim women are working collaboratively with Christians and others to enable change in their own communities. Clearly, we live in an increasingly fractured society or rival tribes, I think, as the one political theorist has, has described British society, what he called the somewheres and the anywheres. The somewheres are those 60% of British people who live, die within 20 miles of where they're born. And they have a strong sense of place, local patriotism, social conservative values often. As against the anywheres, the increasing numbers that go off to university who don't have that sense of locality and commitment to place. And you could map Brexit, those who voted for and those who voted against, on one of those two tribes. And therefore I think, you know, how do we bridge the gap between the somewheres and the anywheres? And my own sense is, the church is one of those agencies which, which is doing just that, because they have a sense of locality and place, especially the Church of England to which I belong, has been around a long time. So a sense of holding a local memory, but also are outward looking and have members within the church after all, from all across the world. So that they are helping communities move from, if, if, if you like, a sense of nostalgia, you know, if only, to a what if, embracing the new and the positive. So I see the churches and faith communities more generally as carriers of critical values for the common good, which can bridge, if you like, these rival tribes. I think that if, if I can speak out of my own tradition as, as a Christian, I think, I think there's a, a wonderful report that just come out looking at three areas in the Northeast. Um, pretty demoralised areas, demoralised by the decline of heavy industry across the North East. And it looked at the role of churches in how it remoralises these neighbourhoods. And again, it's part of that narrative of, of shifting people from a nostalgia for the, good, for the good old days to embracing some of the positives in the new situation. And so it's, it's an excellent little report. It's called Place, People and Purpose. And I think it's a model of the church operating at a local level. But also the glory, I think, of churches, especially I'm an Anglican, I think a national and international church, is you operate at different levels. You operate at the local, citywide level, regional and national. And therefore you can impact regional policy makers as well as national policy makers. There's two aspects of William Temple's life um, which I find particularly inspirational. One is a young Christian in my 20s at university coming across his phrase that the church is one of the only association societies which exists for the benefit of its non-members. I thought that was inspirational in terms of his outward looking focus on serving all irrespective of background, um, class, race, religion. 
And the second is his particular book written in the midst of the Second World War in the 1940s, Christianity in the Social Order, which was a seminal text in the creation of a welfare state, looking beyond the crisis to reconstruction within British society. So those two aspects of the temporal legacy both obviously feed into each other. One is outward looking and one exemplifies that in the midst of a crisis. And it seems to me that's where we're at at the moment in British society, multiple crises and looking for signs of hope. And I think the Christian church at its best, where it's true to that legacy of temple, has much to say. I think what I'd like to see the William Temple Foundation doing is building on its legacy. And part of that legacy is, is working across local communities in the north of England, particularly, it has a strong tradition after all. Temple, before becoming Archbishop of Canterbury, was Bishop of Manchester. A concern for the common good, a concern for enabling conversations across these different tribes, different classes, and, and so on. So being an agent of both reconciliation and reconstruction 